Hey, ooh. what's going on, guys? Hello, hello, welcome back. Here we are. All right, hang on. Let me just get us all set up here. Uh, Matthias, uh, us lonely few, Samaj, what's going on, guys? Early faces in here. Um, Potatoon there on Twitch, what's going on? Guki Khan, sorry if I'm mispronouncing a, if I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, over on Facebook, what's going on, guys? Let's see, the Chevster is here. What's going on, man? Blueberry. Uh, Raditya, again, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your guys' names, but uh, hello, welcome, guys. Welcome back. Uh, if you were watching earlier. I was here with Aaron and Mike, and we were talking about the, some more of the weathered entries. Uh, I took a little break to eat some lunch, and now we're back at it. Back to work here on the... What are we working on? Krakenvogel. Yes, that's the name of it. Mm. Ah, so, it's more Machine and Krieger goodness here today. So let's get right into it. Um, yesterday, after the live stream ended... I continued work basically kind of like all the rest of the afternoon as well too. Continued work on this kit and just basically finishing up some of the sections that we were working on, uh, working ahead a little bit and just kind of gluing some of the seam lines so that you guys didn't really need to see me gluing seam lines. That's all pretty self-explanatory. There's nothing really too interesting about that. So I just worked on some of that like on the uh, Panzerstrex here. There's six of these and each like the main piece is just to have so glued those and then earlier today earlier this morning sanded those so those are already and the other pieces of that are here as well too so just working on some of these sections and we'll continue on with that here today but another thing that happened yesterday while i was working on this was that i spilled my glue my tamiya no it's not it's not tamiya it's uh i'm just used to saying tamiya glue but it's actually mr hobby mr cement sp uh, as we found out, the SP stands for superpower, and it is certainly superpower. Uh, you know, this is the glue that I often use. You guys, we most often see me using this, the Tamiya Extra Thin, in my videos. The nice thing about the SP is that it uh, cures a little bit faster, so you, you usually don't need to wait quite as long uh, before you can start uh, sanding it. And so that's the nice thing about this. But it's a little bit, I find a little bit trickier to use. It's not quite as comfortable. So I still got both of them here on hand. The th extra thin is still like preferable uh, between the two. It's a bit easier to use. But uh, when you want to work on something, uh, you don't want to wait too long on uh, then the SP is good for that. So yeah, but uh, it's fast acting, so I spilled a bunch here on my table, so you see this part that looks like it's just blown out in the video, like it's just white, blown out from the lights, but no, it's because all the, the uh, what is it, printing on here is all gone, because it's all melted away from the glue. So, and I also spilled a bunch of glue all over a bunch of parts, like I had all these parts was all like sitting right here, because I was working on sanding them and stuff, and so... Yeah, I just glue all of the parts, I had to sand all that off, had to... I'm gonna have to get some new cutting mats here for my table. Um, Zane asked, how's the citrulline? I've got some of, or I'm not sure, I've got the, what is it? Actually, I don't know. Glue from Tamiya, I don't know about that. I have the Tamiya Limonine, I think it's called. It's over there on my shelf. Limonine, that's the one that um, I'd seen uh, not too long, about a month ago or something. I'd seen Lincoln recommend it. Uh, because it's not quite as harmful to parts that are like already painted if you're gluing I think he recommended it for if you're gluing parts that are already painted uh, if you've ever tried that with one of these type glues you know that this will eat through the paint and you're gonna have a bad time but uh, I think he recommended that for those and I tried it and I actually found it to be kind of about the same really to be honest so I'll have to work with it a little bit a little bit more but just like from the initial first couple of tries that I've tried using it it I didn't really find it to be all that different. It certainly smells different, yes, I'll give it that, but uh, as far as like the actual effect of it, I'm not too sure like really how different it is. Um, so let's see, Mike's there, hanging out a little bit as well too. What's going on? Uh, let's see. Spilling liquid cement is the worst. 
hits any plastic parts, it's a GG. Yeah, so I was like quickly trying to spread all the parts out to make sure that none of them were getting fused together. Like, okay, you got some glue on there, that's fine. I'll have to sand that, but at least nothing's getting stuck together. So, um, thank you, Mike. Uh, another great review stream. Mike said, yes, couldn't do it without uh, the other Mike, Mike Rinaldi and Aaron. Those guys are great, so. Uh, saw it in the store, I was just curious. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know about citrulline. I don't know about that. I know limonene is the other one, the kind of yellow one with the orange cap from Tamiya. Citrulline, I'm not sure. I know it's like, it, that might be what you're talking about. I don't know. It's The name is kind of different, but. Uh, did you paint the HGC Goof Custom? No, I have not uh, painted that kit yet, no. Okay, so um, let's just get these just kind of done and out of the way here since they're a bunch of pieces. For the uh, Panzer Shrex, basically, I think it's, uh, I, and I don't remember offhand if it's the, you know, I think the runner is slightly different, but the parts are basically exactly the same as with the uh, Dachshund. So I've got my ones over here from the Dachshund kit, which are already primed and everything. I just need to work on painting that kit as well too. But they're a little bit different, and like the mount of them is different, and the back part's different because they're kind of like joined together, these two of them. Whereas with this kit, they, each one is individual on its own, so it's just a matter of just gluing all these pieces together now at this point. So let's go ahead and do that. For this side, I'm just going to be using the extra thin because I don't really, I'm not in a hurry. There's not going to be any further sanding any required on these. So this glue can take its time a little bit. And even this, I the SP is faster, but the extra thin is not a slow drying glue by any means. It's also quite quick. It's just that the SP is super quick. Uh, as far as like uh, this type of cement goes, I think. Anyway, I'm spilling some more glue, managing to already make a mess of this as well too here. So we'll get these glued and then uh, I'll show you how the rest of the stuff is coming along. On this, cause yeah, I did some more work just uh, finishing up, sanding the seam line like on the head as well too. I'm just kind of going through, I thought I would just go through the six of them, glue all the back ends on first, then all the front ends, but I'm just kind of, the parts are all here, so I might as well do it all at once. Why does that look slightly bent? I might need to go back and do a little bit more sanding on these, so I may have spoke too soon, but that's okay. If I need to do a little bit more later on. Just because some of that glue is leaking out the side a little bit there, so. I'll just do a bit more cleanup sanding a little bit later. But what's going on with you guys today in the chat? Is this kind of like a sort of counts as like a late night stream, right, doesn't it? Because at least in the US, those of you guys watching in the US, if you're on that time zone, it's late night for you guys. It's middle of the afternoon here, 2 p.m. But uh, usually don't prefer not to stream at this time uh, because I know for those of you guys who are in the US, it's pretty late. Depending on, I guess, which coast you're on, but usually earlier in the day is good for me because then it's not too late at night for those in North America. Uh, good afternoon from the Philippines. Thank you, Siegfried. Good afternoon. Just finished with the RG New Gundam. Oops, that's the wrong end. Oh yeah, definitely got some glue leaking out of that one, so we'll do some more sanding on these later on. No big deal. I realize I'm 
placing them all off camera, but anyway. I did bring, well, if you guys saw my Instagram post, which I just threw up here, just to let people know that we were live, but if you guys are coming from Instagram, you've already seen the photo, but I brought the batteries needed to test out the LED unit for this. So it's not like a, an LED unit for this, like in the typical sense, like we think of like the ones from Bandai, but the LED set that I'm using for this. So I'll show that to you right now. Just a second. That was a very loud sound there from the sink. Kind of unexpected. 10 p.m. yesterday. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, yeah. So yeah, the mic's on the west coast there. 10 p.m. is not that late for you guys. So it's still all right. It's getting pretty late. It's it'd be it's 1 a.m. on the east coast though. So. Uh, how are you going to prevent the light leak? Yes, so there is some light leak. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, so here's the head. I've got some LEDs in there. I'll probably later on, there's still a whole bunch of string here, so I'll stuff some more up in there later on, but you can see how that's looking. So yeah, there is some light leaking out over here on the side. There's a couple little holes there. Those are going to be filled up with some more parts. There's a handful of parts that are need, still need to be uh, put on the head here. And there's light just shining through the plastic, you can see that, but once the paint's on there, uh, it should be fine. I don't expect that there's going to be too much light, like, glowing through there once the paint is on. That said, on this little panel here, there's this piece to cover that up if you want to, or you can leave it off. Or you can do what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue it on so that it looks like it's opened up, like an open hatch, and what I did inside there as I drilled some holes, you guys should be able to see that. Hey, those little holes there are kind of drilled in there in a way that you can see it if you're looking straight down, but once this hatch is kind of glued on at an angle there and you're, you're looking at the kit from like the side, kind of like a normal viewing angle of it, it'll just basically look like this area that's opened up there just has some light inside there. So it should look really cool uh, later on. So just drilling some more holes where light's gonna come in. And back here on like the back end, there's these holes, there's two more clear parts that go on there. So those ones I think I'll probably paint with like some clear orange or something like that uh, before putting those clear parts here on the back. I'll keep them off for the time being. And also this clear part here on the front is not glued into place. It's just, I'm just kind of holding it there. It's not temporarily attached. But uh, it's looking very cool. I think it's going to work out quite well the idea here for this so I have put uh, some more of the rods in so it's just kind of got these rods sticking out all over the place and I'm trying my best to be gentle with this and not bend them honestly probably those are just best left off until you know after painting probably is probably the better time to put those on just keep them off for this stage but what can I say? I'm impatient. It's freeform jazz. Uh, but yeah, there is a little bit of light leak over here, kind of between these two parts where those those are joined with glue, but I guess I just didn't get some glue into right there. So I'll maybe put a little bit more glue in there and or I think that'll also again just be covered up once that gets filled with some paint because it's just a very thin line in there. So I'll maybe drop a little bit of glue for now, but I think later on it should be cool and I was worried about with this clear part on the front if it looks like just a bunch of LEDs just stuffed up in there which is what it is so I'm worried about if that's gonna be too apparent but I think just because of the shape of this clear piece it uh, it does enough to just kind of refract the light in a weird way that it doesn't it looks cool it looks good anyway it doesn't look like just a bunch of like Christmas lights stuffed up in there you know what I mean which honestly if you think about like the history of Machine and Krieger, like, it's very Star Wars inspired, and especially this one. And, using Christmas lights on, like, stuff within, like, the actual props used in the Star Wars movies is something that they did actually do, so it doesn't really necessarily seem that wrong for it to look like it's got Christmas lights inside there, you know what I mean? 
So yeah, if I can carefully pull these out of that thing, that's I'm not gonna test this again because it's kind of tricky. So it's just got like just a three millimeter hole down here at the bottom, which is just big enough for the lights to fit through, but it's gonna be kind of a pain to get them out of. So I won't test it again. Uh, let me see. Uh, let's see. Uh, it looks like it has an AI inside. Yeah, I mean, something like that. If the light were red, it'd be cool. Like with those Terminator machines, yes. You should paint the HG Stargazer. I, I, I still have, that's, you know, over the years I kind of get rid of some kits every now and then. Uh, not as much as I should or could, surely, but... Uh, that's one kit that I've held on to for a long time because I would like to do something with that kit. It's an interesting design. So I would like to do something with the Stargazer at some point. I've never really been too interested in getting the... Uh, I know there's like a resin conversion kit for making a 100 scale version of that. I just didn't really like the design of it though. I thought about getting that when it came out. And just the design I don't know, just didn't really so much appeal to me. Uh, you guys are saying clear red on the lens. I. For right now, I'm still thinking to keep it in just plain clear, but I don't know, I could change my mind later on. I haven't completely settled on a color scheme on the kit either as well, so that might also affect what color I end up ultimately wanting to paint that. Um, but, hang on, because I am thinking of using this. Where is it? I think it's in here. I have like a box of small works in progresses. It's not in there. Let me see. If it's not in here, then it's over there. Okay. It's over there. Hang on just a second. Let me grab that. figure that I wanted to use with this. Uh, where'd it go? I thought it was around here somewhere. Did I put it somewhere else? I swear it was around here. Damn, what the hell? find where that went. I had a resin figure that I had started working on and I was planning on using it with a different kit and then that I did decided not to. And then whilst I started working on this I thought oh this would be a good chance to use that figure that I now can't find. I must have put it somewhere. Well, I'll have to find that later on. It's around here somewhere. But uh, if you guys are like familiar with like 120 scale Machining Krieger resin figures, it's the girl, it's the Machining Krieger figure with like the girl like floating in space like with her hand like out on something like floating in, in the space suit I think would be a good one with this one to have her like floating on the top of it and especially with the open hatch so making her kind of like she's like checking out the hatch or something like that well 
So I'll find that later on, and then we'll we'll discuss more about that, I guess, maybe in tomorrow's stream. Uh, but otherwise, let me just show you some of the other stuff that I've been working on for this. So this is the, uh, the anti-gravity... Who's a what's it? Anti-gravity unit. Oh, that's easy enough. Which is basically just two halves and this little bar. Here's a separate piece, uh, which I think got melted a little bit by the glue. It's kind of a little bit warped, but honestly, it's fine. Um, and then there's two little end pieces there as well too. The shit part about this is that the seam line goes all the way through this, so you have all this like ribbed detail with a seam line through that. So I, I basically, I mean, there's not really much you can do with that. I mean, I could spend hours and hours just trying to remove that seam line and like rescribing that detail and stuff, but honestly, I'm, I can't be bothered. I got rid of the seam line where I could, unlike these kind of uh, raised flat detail areas as best I could, and like here on the ends as well too. There's like this really, really fine raised, again, like kind of ribbed detail. Sorry for the so, so like vulgar way to describe that somewhat, but. And I was looking at the photos, like even the product photos for this kit. And every photo, it's it's done in a way where you, uh, you can't see the line. Because I'm thinking like, okay, so like even Koyokuyama-san himself like making the uh, making the kit for the promo images uh, assuming that he did it or whoever did it uh, the one like for the promotional images how did they what did they do about that seam line so I was wondering so I checked and you can't see it in those images so I think that's intentional there's no image that really shows that seam line so Fair enough, I'll just leave it kind of there as it is. Um, so this is the kind of, uh, what was this one? The engine unit, power unit. There's the top and bottom part of this. The bottom part's pretty simple. That just goes on to here. And then the, these uh, like thrusters out the back are glued on by a very tiny little section that these are attached onto. So kind of wondering if I you know, wanted to try to add in some other sort of part or something like that to give those a, something more solid of a connection. There's not really much holding them on there, but... Uh, this goes on here, and then these parts attach on here, like onto the side. that and then also plug into here at the same time so it's all a bit of a, a puzzle that all kind of fits together in the end like this and this and this and this here so the thing is how much do of this do I want to put together ahead of time because the more of this I put together the harder it is going to be to get the LED up through here so that's kind of the only thing that I'm worried about with this section is that it's a long way to try to string that LED through there up through the bottom the channel is all there but especially up towards the top here it's going to be kind of tricky to get that through this section so I want to maybe leave this apart for the time being, but the problem is then uh, painting it, you're going to have to paint it all as one thing to really get the look. So what I'm thinking is to do is put, uh, do all the priming of these, which I'm just going to do by airbrush. And I haven't even, I said I haven't thought about uh, the color scheme for this. I also haven't even decided if I'm going to be painting it by airbrush or by hand. I'm not sure. Um, so I, I'm not sure, but at least the priming of this, I mean, you know, spraying surface around it, I'm sure I'm going to do that by airbrush. So I think I'll airbrush it in pieces and then I'll put it together with the LED unit and then paint it with the LED installed. 
which is going to be a bit more of a hassle because then, uh, you know, I have to worry about the LED string hanging out of it, which is just kind of a pain. But I think that's going to be kind of the easiest way to do it. Otherwise, I'm just going to have just too hard of a time getting the LED through this section and through this section is easy enough, but then through this section is, is tricky because the hole gets kind of, I had to cut this hole here to hopefully make my life easier when it comes to that step. But uh, so that's going to be the tricky part. So we'll see. Do you usually use Photoshop or something like that to plan your color schemes? Uh, sometimes, yes. Yeah, for like Gundam kits and that, sometimes I'll use Photoshop, yeah. Um, but, so, we need to do, I'll just, I can set those sections aside, we need to do a bit more sanding on these uh, later on, so we can finish those later. And these parts, all this, put all this to the side for now. And we have this guy, the bottom piece which we also need to still make a hole in here as well too for our LED wire and for the base. But there's a bunch of these other little parts that all need to be plugged onto here still yet, so we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, Overlord said over there on Twitch, is it like a custom or a normal build looks like the Psycho Zaku, but isn't. I mean, yeah, sort of. I mean, there's like reminiscent elements of the Psycho Zaku, but no, yeah, I mean, this is just the uh, Machine Krieger Kraken Vogel kit. It's a variant of the new spotter. Hmm. Just sort of like a drone kind of thing. I always want to say that it's like a satellite, because it reminds me of a satellite, but I don't think it, it's actually like a, like a drone that's orbiting in space, I think it does like fly around. But it just looks like it's something that would just like kind of be floating up in orbit. To me, it's always kind of what it looked like to me. Just like a satellite with satellite weapons platform, basically. That seems... Probe. Steven said, so yeah, there you go. I could, uh... was there English on the box or not? forget if this one had it or not. Yeah, it does. Uh, having the fine scouting system showed its superiority in the battlefield. The Stroll forces noticed uh, the quietness and high mobility of the new spotter and tried to use it for a surprise attack weapons. Uh, the payload. Six. Uh, the combination. So, uh, a scouting unit, okay. The English is printed on the bottom of the box, and I have some other stuff, some of the parts and stuff still in the box, so. Uh, anyway. Yeah. I think, uh,. The canon, like the story and backstory into a lot of this stuff is cool, but uh, I will certainly admit that it's not uh, a forte of mine. I mean, the same thing kind of with anything. <laughs> we talked about on the live stream yesterday, the same thing with uh, a lot of Gundam stuff. I'm, as far as like the canon backstory and things like that, it's certainly not my expertise. I just think that the designs look cool. Uh, so with this one, hang on, I'm just making some adjustments here because the camera is looking still a bit strange, but okay. Anyway, I 
mostly white color scheme with multiple tones referencing a space shuttle or ISS may be interesting. It would be kind of interesting. Uh, one thing I mentioned about this before, I think on a live stream with Josh or something, uh, and I keep, I'm keep i keeping this tab open on my phone, it's been open for, like, for months now, uh, about the Starry Night Reed Frog. I had mentioned this about this before, and I still really want to do something using this color scheme. So I'm just kind of wondering if it'll be good for this. I think it'll be, it could be kind of cool. Where it's got like a black top with yellow spots and then like a white underbelly. So it can do that. So basically like the top part of the head. I mean, just imagine like this color scheme applied to mostly just on the head. Cause then like the, the power unit, like middle section is kind of mostly just like mechanical bits, which would just be in like kind of whatever mechanical color I end up choosing for this. So like the main paint scheme will mostly be like on the head part here, the sensor unit, and then like the, the shaft of the body. So I think this could actually work pretty well for this particular design. Um, so, yeah, the question is then, do I want to do that by airbrush or paintbrush? I'm not sure. And also, just yesterday, I got a box of uh, SMS paints from Scott uh, at SMS. So I was thinking to use those because I just got them in and I wanted to try them out with some new colors. I've tried his paints before, uh, but it's been a while since I've used those. So he sent me some new ones to play around with. So I was thinking to use them on this, but if I'm going to be hand brushing, I'm not sure how well those paints do for hand brushing. Uh, I remember I've, it's been a long time though. It's probably been like a, over a year or something. I know I've talked to Lincoln about that. Uh, if, uh, if he had heard of anyone trying it and I can't remember what he said, I think at the time, no one that we knew really had done much experimenting with that. So I'll see, maybe do some experimenting to see how well those hand paint, but I'm expecting probably not to use them for hand painting anything. So if I decide to hand paint this, I probably won't use the SMS paints. Uh, if I decide to go the airbrush route, uh, maybe we'll try using them. But the problem is I don't have that kind of yellowish green color I was showing you on the frog picture. I don't have that uh, yellow green color in the, or anything like similar to that from what Scott sent me. So I'd have to use some, either change up the color scheme and make it a different color or use a, a mix of different paints or something. So I don't know, we'll see. Most of the paints that uh, Scott sent me are like uh, real world, it's mostly like real world military colors, like uh, greens and tans, kind of grayish kind of colors like that. I think like the only kind of more bright color that he sent, I think was, there's like a teal color in there. Which could be kind of interesting to, for like, the bright color of the frog pattern that like we saw to have it be instead of like a yellowish green color to have it be in like a bright teal could be kind of cool so we shall see but considering that I'm trying to as best I can hopefully mostly finish this kit like within this week and like I said just like sharing as much of the process with you guys as I can just doing as much of the process live uh, I don't have much time to think about the color scheme. So I'm hoping to finish most of the construction today so that basically we can start priming and painting like tomorrow, ideally. So assuming we can stick to that schedule, that means I basically have tonight to uh, figure out what I want to do with the paint. Uh, try finishers. I don't have finishers here. I'm sure I could get some, but I don't have any on hand, and I have a shitload of paint already, so I should probably use what I have before getting any more. Since we're on the topic, I might as well just get it out here and show you guys what Scott sent me. So paint-wise, yeah, we got here Schwarzgrün, which is like a 
olive drab kind of color. Dunkel Green, which is a little bit lighter version of that. Um, sand Gelb, which is kind of like a sandy yellowish cream kind of color. Uh, amber Gray, which is kind of similar. It's sort of like a slightly greenish tan color. And, oops, try not to drop any off the table. The paint bottles, I gotta say, are very uncomfortable to hold because the sticker, I don't know, I'm like kind of like sensitive. I'm sensitive about touch on some things, I don't know. Uh, but it, like the sticker material, I don't know, it's got it's that really, it's like kind of like a, that chalkboard kind of feeling like. You know, I don't know. It's kind of like the touch of like the chalkboard, or like the nails on a chalkboard. It's like that touching the, the sticker on the bottle. I gotta say, I really don't like it. But uh, these are all like just different gray colors: hellblau, grow, violet, which I guess is probably kind of like a violet gray. That's sort of like a bluish gray. Grow, which is just kind of like a arlen gray. Kind of, it's not, it's not quite that green. Light blau, which I think is just like an off-white kind of color. I'm probably mispronouncing all these, surely. Grun, which is sort of like a greenish gray. So a bunch of different gray colors, which is great because I, I do love some different colors of gray. So those look like some really nice ones. And then the only like really bright color then is this Aotaki blue, which does look like a really nice kind of teal blue, which is interesting that uh, I just got this package in uh, today, or yesterday, sorry, from Scott. And then if you guys watched my live stream yesterday, I mentioned how recently I've been watching uh, um, Love, Death, and Robots with my wife. And so we just saw the other day there was the, what was it called? Anyway, the, there's the one part of the Love, Death, and Robots with the uh, the artist who was painting like the blue squares and stuff, right? I forget exactly what the color, it was called like Zenny Blue, something like that anyway. So yeah, the blue in that, and then I got this package from Scott with a blue that's very similar to that blue that was just in that episode of Love, Death, and Robots I thought was kind of interesting. So anyway, so those are the colors that I've got to work with. I'm not sure how I would love to use them on this project because I just got them in, I'm working on this. I might as well just use them right now, but I don't know if these colors will work for what I have in mind for this. With that said, I don't necessarily really have anything that I'm super set on for the color scheme of this one so I'll see if I can come up with something that I think will work using those if not I'll use them on whatever I'm gonna be painting up next which I am also uh, preparing the mark 5 last night I also started sanding some parts Zima blue that's what it is thank you yes Zima blue what did I say anyway uh, last night I started uh, sanding some parts on the Gundam Mark V to get that ready for painting in the near future as well too. And that one I actually decided I'm going to be painting it in like a black uh, sort of color scheme. And now I know there's like a black variant of that that was featured in like a, a Gundam game, some Gundam game I've seen it on like the wiki page, there's a black version of that. But it's not going to be based off of that. Mine is going to be a black Converge custom. So Converge as in the band Converge. And it's something that I've wanted to do for a long time. I have some Converge decals that I had custom printed up ages ago that I've never used, that I really want to use. And so I've been saving them for a cool idea. And it kind of... At first, I thought to do it for the Mark V, and I thought, oh, the Mark V, it's a big, you know, expensive uh, P Bandai Master Grade kit. It's a really awesome kit. I don't know if I want to use such a kit for doing what is basically just like a, like kind of a novelty idea, painting a kit, uh, like based on the theme of just like a band that I like, you know. I didn't know if I really wanted to do that using such a kit, but then I thought, like, fuck it, why not? I don't know. If 
I really want to get another Mark V later on and do it in like a more traditional color scheme or something like that, I can. But later on, I don't need to like save this one like for something special necessarily, you know what I mean? So yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and do it. And I didn't necessarily have like any other better ideas in mind for the Mark V. Um, I was, other than that, I was planning on probably just doing like just kind of a, a original color scheme for that and maybe just changing it up slightly, but I didn't really have anything super special in mind, so I thought, well, yeah, let's just do a converge theme. Uh, a band that you like and a kit that you like, great combo, yeah, exactly, so. I'm sure I'm gonna love it. I'm sure you guys are gonna love it too, because I'm sure it's gonna look good. I think actually like a black color scheme on the Mark V is actually gonna look really good. It's gonna look like, just like very intimidating. So I think it'll look very really dope. So just uh, bear with me on that. Keep the faith alive. D'Angelo, thank you as well for the super chat there as always. I've risen from sleep to donate. Also got paint. Very good. Thanks for coming to hang out. So yeah, there's just all these little parts and stuff that are going to like this main section here. So it's just a matter of gluing them all on. All little detail bits. So we'll do that. And there's a couple more still yet as well. And then this section is basically done until we're ready to put a big hole in it. Uh, hope the silver bullet wouldn't be banned. Yeah. Remember, don't use actual black. Yeah, Mike, that's what I was thinking too, of course, because we were just discussing that recently, right, about not using actual black. But I think, like, honestly, for... This particular project and like what I want to do with it I'm gonna have to well not have to but I, I'm gonna want to go pretty pretty close to actual black which I think in this particular case I think will work fine it still won't be straight up black but we're gonna go pretty close to that but you know and it, I'm not as much of a stickler as Tim is about using pure black. I, in general, yes, my advice would be to 9 out of 10 times or even like 19 out of 20 times would be not ever to use pure black. Yes. But there are, of course, exceptions. So... Um, basically... I think it can be done, you just have to take it into consideration, you know, if it really fits with your particular project. Uh, we'll see. There's, uh, there's kind of a lot of sanding and prep work to get that kit ready, so I think Hopefully my plan is to like get this kit mostly done this week and I may have to like Finish it up early next week, but we'll see Hopefully I can You know make some make pretty short work of this project and it's going pretty well so far. I mean, it's just Tuesday so It's very possible that we can finish this this week and then uh, just kind of spend Sometime also this week just getting the prep work done on the silver bullet or not silver bullet no, no, The mark V, and then uh, start painting the mark V next week That would be ideal, but we'll see how well we can end up sticking to that uh, Edwin asking why not use pure black the reason is because uh, and actually Who was it uh, if Mike? Uh, oh Mike's still there in the chat. Yeah, Mike was that you or Aaron today that made that point about the 80 20 thing that actually was a really great way of explaining that that I hadn't really thought about before but I think it was Mike that was saying that yeah that uh, 
Like, if you use pure black, that's well, that's 100% black. You can't then use anything darker than that. But if you use something that's, I think he used like 80% for an example, but I'll even go darker and say like 90% black. So it's like super, super dark gray, but not pure black. So if you imagine as like 90%. And then if you wanted to then use something like a black penaline wash over the top of that, you'll actually be able to see it. Whereas if you use pure black and then you try to do like a penaline wash painting your panel lines in with pure black and obviously there's there's no point in doing that you're not gonna be able to see anything so uh using not quite pure black then allows you that space to then add stuff in that is actually pure black that will be visible otherwise it won't be any won't be visible at all uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so like mike's saying you lose that option and also just uh in real life stuff that's like black as it looks black is usually never actually black when you're thinking especially like machinery and stuff right mm. so yeah it's much more realistic to use not pure black use just something really dark and like we mentioned this during the live stream build that like a german gray is a good one because super dark gray Color. I find it kind of depends on which brand you're using though, but especially like Mr. Hobby German Grey is really really dark. Um, Midnight Blue from Gaia is also super dark grey. It's hardly blue at all, so I mean don't let the name... If you're like shopping online and where you like can't actually see the bottle in front of you and you just see like Midnight Blue, you think, oh, I don't want it to be like too blue. It's, hard, it's not really blue at all. Um, I showed this for an example and you guys saw... Um, oops, sorry, my painted Asuka kit recently uh, that's midnight blue and the only reason that it even looks slightly bluish purple is because of the amethyst crystal color that I sprayed over the top of that without that I mean it just looks like a super super dark navy gray almost black so anyway all right so let's uh, there's a couple more pieces we need to add to this a 16 I think I still have yeah I was gonna say, I thought I finished the A runner already. Did I already throw the A runner away with a couple of tiny little parts left on? But no, I didn't. It's still here. What if you go black and then pull it back with a filter? Yeah, you could do that, of course, too. Um, let's hang on, let's see, 16. Why is there three of those? I only need two, right? I guess maybe we just have a, an extra. Um, you could use black and then pull it back with a filter, or what I do sometimes um, is, I don't know what actually you'd call this. I'm sure there's probably a, a particular name for this, or there's like a more kind of uh, better explanation of this particular technique, but it's just something that I just kind of started doing on my own sometimes. So like, what I'll do is uh, rather than mix a color, and this is usually not done on purpose, it's usually just that I'll spray a color and then it won't be exactly quite right to what I wanted. So rather than, than going and mixing a new color and completely repainting the whole parts, what I'll do is then mix a little bit. So like, I need some example. Say I'm using like a blue, so I'm just using straight blue, royal blue, and I'm spraying it, and it's too bright, and what I wanted was actually a little bit more of a desaturated blue. Well, instead of then switching the paint to a more desaturated blue color or mixing like a full thing of like a more desaturated blue and completely respraying the parts, I'll just mix a little bit of a little bit desaturated, a little bit more desaturated blue and make the paint a little bit more thin and then just kind of missed that over the top. So I'm just adding like a very light layer of a slightly different color over the top to change the color of the parts. Um, again, it's like base, you know, ultimately the effect is not that much different from if I just complete, I'm trying not to lose this tiny piece, than if I completely changed the color, but it's just basically changing the color by adding, it's like adding a filter basically, but like an airbrushed filter rather than like normally filtering is not done with an airbrush like as we generally think of it. 
Maybe done with a, a paintbrush and some like uh, whatever you're using, weathering solvent or uh, uh, sorry, not uh, solvent. What's that called? Uh, yeah, weathering solvent, right? Uh, or uh, you know, whatever water or whatever you're using. Uh, yeah, and Mike's saying that the filter will be tonal shift, but most likely get lost and not have the impact over black. So. Yes. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Mike said, it's a great way to shift tones quickly uh, of the same shade without a ton of effort. Yeah, exactly. So it's just kind of one of those things that uh, um, I just kind of started doing just uh, kind of out of necessity. You know, uh, what's the word for that? Not innovative, but uh, intuitive kind of things. Just kind of an adaptation to painting like I painted a color and it wasn't exactly right so instead of like completely redoing it I can just adjust the color a little bit by just giving kind of a mist uh, thin filter layer of a slightly different color just to kind of adjust it so I, I, I do that I don't want to say often but sometimes when the color doesn't quite look quite right or I would want to make some little adjustments to it. So just something to keep in mind, those of you guys ear brushing. You know, if the color is not looking quite right, don't uh, you know go back and completely redo it, or think that you need to go back to the store and buy some more paints or something like that. You can make a pretty simple, easy little adjustment. There we go. All right. Uh, you are says saludos, uh, saludos desde Chile. That's terrible pronunciation, I know, sorry. I met you on the Quinta Hobby event uh, on Vinilla Mar. Ah, uh, cool, thank you, man, I miss Chile. I had a lot of fun there, yeah, I was, I'm really, really happy that, uh, that uh, they invited me to that event. I was there able to, I was able to go there and spend some time with everyone down there in Chile. It was a super fun time. I'm really looking forward to going back again at some point when I can, when all this, COVID stuff is all gone. It's gonna be a good time. All right, so that part is done. Now we need to go back to the head because there's a bunch of little bits that uh, we didn't put on the head yet because we we're working on that still. So let's do that. Do you recommend using gun primer or would any generic sanding sponge do? As far as like sanding sponges go, uh, uh, the glass file, the gun primer, gra the gun primer glass file, I found to be pretty nice. I mean, I don't know how it compares to other glass files. I know they claim to be different. I don't know really how different it is. I haven't experimented with it, uh, especially for clear parts if you're building a kit uh, that's like a clear color kit or whatever. I think that's probably the most useful way to use that is with those type kits. Um, otherwise, um, otherwise, uh, the actual sponge is is probably the. I mean, the glass file, I don't know. But as far as the sponge goes, I'm sure it's not that different from just like any other kind of sanding sponge you can just buy from a, a beauty supply store. It's like a nail buff, nail buff kind of sponge. I think that's probably basically this, uh, you know, going to give you the same. The glass file maybe is like a little bit better in its quality than like what you would get. Like, I know people say like, oh, you can buy them on Amazon for like $2 each. 
I'm guessing there's maybe a little bit difference in quality there with those. Um, but for the sponges, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I would really necessarily put too much stock in believing that those sponges are really all that different, you know? If you're buying it as a set, I mean, then you'll just get the set. But if you're looking at just getting like just a gun primer or sponge, I, I don't know if I don't know if they sell the sponges on their own, and I don't know how much they cost. But uh, say if they're selling just the sponge for like I don't know eight, ten dollars, something like that, whatever, I would say maybe no don't buy it. Yeah, a bunch of these little detail parts and stuff that we're just adding on to the kind of head. Now, I'm just going to keep referring to it as the head. I know it's technically not a head, it's a sensor unit. But you guys know what I mean. that these tiny little parts again I mentioned this yesterday as well too but these tiny little parts that have not just one as you might think but two gates that you have to remove on them making these tiny little parts all the more fun to work with so they couldn't just design it with one gate would be too crazy. Uh, they sell the balancer for about two dollars uh, a pop. I, I mean, that's not bad, I guess, you know. That's not gonna be that much different from what you would pay for a, a nail buff. I mean, I'm sure someone will say, I found one for 50 cents on Amazon, which is fine, you know, but I mean, two dollars for 50 cents is not that big a deal. But, uh, yeah, yeah. If you're, like, ordering some other stuff and you want to throw it into your order, I mean, two bucks is not that bad, yeah. The other thing that I think I'm going to want to do with this, possibly, is maybe add a few more wires. But it's kind of hard to do that at this point, so we'll see uh, a little bit later on. Once I start to put some more of it together, wires are just kind of pretty easy things to just kind of add in. If I need to drill any holes or whatever, it doesn't even matter if the part's painted. I just drill a hole and add a wire in there. Not that big a deal. If I need to paint the wire, could be trickier. But we have some leftover black ones here, so... Oh, I think we're going to have some leftover black. I still have to use some. Uh, but I'm sure there's going to be some leftover. Uh, <sighs> Mike said, our heads are basically our sensor unit. Yeah, I was using the head sensor unit. It's all tomato, tomato, right? So why not? But uh, I can definitely say that this one, this kit, like compared to the previous two that I built, the Cooster and the Dachshund, this one's definitely a little bit easier. I mean, it's pretty similar basically, but it is slightly easier. There's not as many like moving parts and things like the 
The dachshund has arms and legs. The cooster had legs. And I added arms. Uh, but this one basically just being kind of a body. And it's got like sort of arms kind of in the fact that it has like the the bits which we'll add on here in just a minute. But it doesn't really have arms and legs with joints and all that stuff. What do you think of SH Studio conversion kits? Uh, honestly, I'm not familiar. The name doesn't ring a bell. I mean, conversion kits in general, I, I could tell you, but... SH Studio conversion kits, what, what have they made? I'm not sure. A lot of like the resin conversion stuff, I don't keep up with super well. If it's something that I'm particularly interested in, I might, but otherwise, I tend to just kind of ignore that stuff for the most part, unless it's something that I've I'm planning on buying or something that I really like or really want. And these days, I'm just not really feeling too much kind of in the market for stuff like that, really, just because I've already got, I've got a handful of those in my collection already, and I know how long they take, and I know how high up they are in my priority list at the moment, which is pretty low. So I'm not really looking to add any like uh, resin conversion type stuff these days. It's just not something that I'm really in the mood to buy. But you know, if something came out super cool that I surely didn't want to miss, I'd have to go for it. But not really been the case with what's been out recently. Uh, there is a PG Dom Tropping conversion kit they just announced, and I was wondering what your thoughts about it. I don't know if I've seen that. If you send me a link or something like that, I'll, I'll check it out, but... Um, the last couple, like, Xeon-style conversion kits that I've seen... I think there was one not too long ago for, like, a... a perfect... making, like, a... the Perfect Grade Zaku into, like, a Perfect Grade Goof Custom, I believe, was another one that I saw recently, and it could very well be from the same studio, if they're making a Perfect Grade Xeon conversions. Uh, if it is, yeah, I didn't really like the design of it. I didn't like the look of it, so... Even though I love the Goof Custom, usually, the design just didn't really do much for me, so... Yeah, again, just didn't really pay too much attention to it, because it didn't appeal to me. That's the thing with, like, a lot of resin conversion kits. Some of them do look really nice, but for me personally, a lot of them just kind of usually end up going down the path of being too detailed, because like that's one thing that people like about resin conversion kits is usually a lot of time like the the main point of them is that they add a lot of detail to the kit, um, which is the point, but I feel like sometimes uh, it just doesn't really look good aesthetically in my opinion adding too much detail to them so and also like the particular style of the detail so like for the goof custom again as far as i can remember i just didn't like the design of the detail on it and like the head design i think i remember was also kind of just ugly looking in my opinion so it's nothing to do with like the actual quality of the kit or anything i have no idea I like the quality of the casting and the details and all that, so I mean, if you like the design, I'm not saying anything that like, oh, I don't recommend the kit you got to you guys. If you like the design, then, you know, check it out, but for me personally, right off the bat, the design didn't do anything for me, so at that point, I'm not really interested in wanting to actually build it or anything to see how the quality is. Uh, what decal brands do you usually get over there? Well, I mean, here in Korea, we basically have everything they have in Japan. Um, some of, like, the more obscure paints we have a hard time getting, or at least I've not really seen them much around. Uh, but pretty much everything you can get in Japan, you can get here just as easily. Um, so decal brands, I mean, Haikyuu is kind of what I use mostly. Um, I have a bunch of Bandai decals, I have a bunch of uh, Simp decals, Mecha decals, all these, I just kind of use whatever I need. 
Uh, are you planning to get the next Mechanicore kit? John asked. Um, the next kind of Mechanicore kit that I know of that's coming out is the Excess, which I think they're not... That's not... Uh, is it a Mechanicore kit? I don't remember if that was under Mechanicore or if they were... If that was coming out as, like, something different. I think it's Mechanicore, though, right? The Excess? But no, uh, the Excess, I am not planning on getting, if that's the kit you're talking about. I haven't seen any announcements for what they're going to be making after that, but... At least, as far as the excess is concerned, no, I don't plan on getting that. So would you recommend a G rework or Delpy? I've heard they are Korean based. Yeah, both of those are Korean based. I've not actually used either of them. <laughs> Considering I'm living in Korea, you'd think that maybe I would, but um, G rework, I'm not sure. Honestly, I've not heard a, to a whole lot about them. Delpy, I've, I have heard more about, and a lot of people do seem to like Delpy decals, so. I've heard uh, pretty much basically only good reviews regarding those, so even though I can't say personally, I would say if you're interested in getting some Delphi decals, you're probably going to be happy with them. Yeah. Slowpoke says they're great. There you go. Alright, let's get these parts added onto here. This little triangle-y piece goes on the back. Mike also said Del P are great, so there you go. Kind of an interesting piece to be added onto here. And these guys... for a nice little raised detail there. I thought that this little part was going to fit in kind of flushly, but it does actually end up being a nice raised bit of detail there. This one as well too. Trying to put those in carefully really should use some tweezers because then Glue is going to come out, get in my fingers, and I'm going to make a mess with sticky glue fingers, and I'm going to have to resand that, but fortunately I was able to get that in without issue this time, but uh, hindsight, probably should have used tweezers on that. And Uh, clean up your nubs. Hey, they're clean, except for just this part, which I'm just taking off the nubs right now because I glued it. So I, I talked about this yesterday. On some parts where I'm going to be removing the seam line on them, I usually won't uh, remove the nub marks ahead of time. I'll glue the seam first because then I'm going to have to spend time sanding the part, removing the seam, so I might as well just do it all at once. So there's kind of no point to remove the nub marks, glue the seam, then go back and have to do more sanding. Just knock it out all at once, so. If this is the part you're talking about, then that's why there's still nub marks on it, because I hadn't sent it yet. But I'm doing it right now, so hang on. Yes, 
I figured it was a joke, Justin, but just saying. Alright. Let me just check here. I know there's a couple last little pieces to stick on to the front of this. They're super tiny, so I'm kind of dreading it, but it's no time like the present, so let's go ahead and just bite the bullet, get these last couple tiny little annoying ass pieces stuck on. And so yeah, I think uh, for today, basically we'll kind of finish all the construction of everything. And then what do you think? I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see how the time goes. I don't think I'll have time to get any primer on this today. So I think probably what I'll do is have to get primer on this tomorrow. So do you guys want, do you guys care to see a live stream of uh, spraying primer, I think probably I can maybe skip the streaming of that particular aspect of the build, but what do you guys think? Prime it in the morning and then uh, do a stream later in the afternoon talking about some painting or what? I don't know. How and where does this part even fit onto here? Like that. Uh, skip it, but take a picture. If I can find the uh, the character figure that I wanted to use for this, I'm sure it's around here somewhere. If I can find that, then that's what we could work on tomorrow. After I spray the primer on this, then you we've got to give that some time before we can start on the painting. So in the meantime, we could do some work on the character figure, I think, because that's already actually primed. Because like I said, I was planning on using it for something else, so that's already got primer on it. I don't think I needed to do any more cleanup on it. Uh, to find it first, but I think all the cleanup was basically already done. Where the fuck did I put that? If it's not here, I don't know where it is. No, it's definitely not here. Oh. While we're here, uh huh. With the, let's see. With the grosser hund kit, uh, with the dachshund, technically, but, uh, with the dachshund kit, we had some leftover smoke launchers. So should we add some smoke launchers to this kit? Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, we'll just keep those for later. I don't know kind of where they would really fit in with the design. I could force it, but I don't really want it. Better not to force anything, all right. I'll think about it a little bit more, but I don't think we're gonna wanna add any smoke launchers to this. Probably go ahead and leave those off. Thoughts on the Virtue being priced the same as the Faz? It uh, makes sense to me. <laughs> They're both big MGs that are basically like a kit with a second kit on the outside of it. So, I mean, they're actually quite similar, the Faz and the Virtue. I think, honestly, the Faz kind of did seem to have a little bit more going on with it. Um, but... I think the, uh, I mean, so I'm guessing by asking that question, your point is that you think the, the Master Grade Virtue is a little bit overpriced, which, I mean, I can understand the reason to think that because yeah, the Faz probably is a little bit larger, 
of the kit. I'd have to go back and like actually check the, the height of those mole suits in canon, but I would imagine the Faz is slightly larger. And I think it probably had a little bit more going on with the outer armor. So yeah, pound for pound, it probably does seem to be probably a little bit more in there than with the Virtue. So the Virtue you would think would be slightly cheaper, but I don't know. It's They're pretty comparable, so. The fact that the Virtue costs as much as it does honestly doesn't surprise me at all. It's if Before we knew what the price was going to be, if I had to guess, I would have guessed around 80, uh, 80 bucks for that anyway. Around 8,000 yen. So... It's exactly what I would have expected it to cost, basically. Uh, yeah, that's a good point as well, too, Mike mentioned. I have totally forgot about that, but uh, Bandai prompted us with future price hikes. Yeah, that's true. They did also mention that uh, kind of the cost of kits in general was going to be going up. So yes, that is also true. Yeah. Although, based on the what we've seen of the Virtue so far, I think for like the Nadle's hair parts, that's kind of the one thing that looks like it's going to be kind of disappointing for me. I wish that we had some more options for the Nadle's hair parts, because it looks like we only really have like the, just the one set of like fixed pose. And what I mean by like fixed pose is that it looks like you can adjust like the angle of them, but there's only like one set of hair parts. I mentioned this, I think, when Adam and I were talking about this on a live stream recently that uh, I wish it came with another set of hair parts for like a more dynamic look because there's only so much that you can do with just the one set that's included yeah So, of these two little parts here, get the tweezers back out. Tricky. Very tricky. Whew. All right, we're safe. Got both those tiny little pieces in. Whew. Man. All right. Uh, the other clear parts at the back of there will test test those out later um, that's all for this step there was a couple more pieces to add onto the head though here from the H runner Let's go ahead and just grab those real quick H 3 11 12 3 Getting down to just basically the last few little parts here, which are basically just for like the uh, arms, kind of the, like uh, satellite arms. Himada, I sent notice my MG new hip-up system shipped today. I like the off-white tones of this version. Yeah, Mike. So you got the uh, the new Gundam heavy weapon system, like the full set that comes with like the armor. Then for the heavy weapon system, isn't it like a kind of cream off-white color. That's definitely the much better looking version of that, just because the slightly different color of it. When you buy just the heavy weapon system set on its own, then it just comes in the same 
like a white color as the uh, the new Gundam, and just doesn't look doesn't look as cool. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Still need to uh, build that one. <laughs> Got that in the stash. Got that and. I think like the uh, high new Verka high boom system, but uh, the no, it's a bit embarrassing to say so, but I actually kind of don't remember offhand which. I think I have the uh, the heavy weapon system high new set. I think I only have in the mechanical clear version. I don't think. Uh, maybe I do. I, I probably do. I also have just the regular version. I think I have the the new heavy weapon system, the high new heavy weapon system, and the clear mechanical clear high new heavy weapon system. I think I think I have all three of those. I believe I've not built any of them yet. Yes, they're just in my someday stash. Yeah, you're gonna love the Mark V. Mike, I will say too, and I, I really need to, maybe next week when I get to starting uh, work painting on the Mark V, I'll do a work in progress video on that. I wasn't really planning on doing any work in progress video because I'm not really making any modifications or anything, so it's always kind of seems weird to do a work in progress video for just painting because it's just painting. There's nothing really too special about it, I think, but uh, I do want to do a work in progress video for that, I think, and I probably should just basically only to just explain to people who are also getting the kit how difficult it is to disassemble that kit i've had uh, i mentioned this in to the guys in my discord that i've just had a terrible time disassembling that kit the mark 5 is undoubtedly the most difficult kit to disassemble that i've ever experienced from bandai and it's not because it's like a, a poorly designed kit or something like that it's just that it's designed very well and disassembling it is just kind of proven to be difficult because of the good fits. I mean, like, if you're wanting to build up that kit and if you're not planning on painting it and if you're worried about, like, uh, uh, you know, some people worry about, like, the stability of kits or whatever. If it's going to be a kit that ends up being a little loosey-goosey or something, but it's not. It's a tank. It's a beast. You're not gonna have anything like loose parts or anything with that. So it's quite the opposite case from what people typically kind of worry about sometimes with stuff like that. So fear not. There you go. That is all for the search enemy seeker, I'm guessing, that's what it says here in the manual for that particular part. I think that's probably what that's supposed to be, I suppose. The search enemy seeker and rocket booster. Rocket booster would be the other part that's on the back, the big thruster bells. Uh, I love that Bandai is putting more effort into kits with all the details and more interesting gimmicks. I mean, yeah, that's kind of always been their thing, right? Bandai's always been very good quality kits, but I mean, I guess I think maybe the better way to put it is that it's good to see that they're still, that they always put a good amount of effort into it. And then again, we do see a kit every now and then that, I mean, you can tell uh, didn't get quite as much love as others. I mean, it does happen from time to time, but in general, yes, Bandai's uh, kit quality is always good we need 25 millimeters of wire here for this uh, search enemy seeker so I'm guessing it's just some kind of radar or something, whatever. The, 
the plugs into where? Oh, okay, here on the side. All right. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. I'm gonna drill this out a little bit more. So there's this hole here on the side. Okay, that's fine. And then a hole here underneath, which is quite shallow. So we'll drill this one a little bit. Where's <laughs> like a, trying to get a good grip on this before I can drill it? I can't decide which way I want to grip it because I just glued it. So I'm feeling like I probably shouldn't drill this yet because should give the glue some more time to set before I start drilling into it, but again, who's got time for that? We've got stuff to build. And that's pr <laughs> probably enough, so let me this uh, will extra thin cement hold this uh, wire in place because vinyl coated so I would feel like I mean that's kind of like plastic should kind of be melted by the uh, glue are you getting one of the new Barzam P Bandai kits uh, I wasn't able to get a pre-order in for them here for a Korean P Bandai but I believe uh, Patrick, I don't think Patrick's watching at the moment. Uh, Patrick, who helped me get my hands on the uh, Mercurius and V8 set, actually he got it for me and sent it to me, so big thank you to him for that. Uh, I, if, I think I remember him. <laughs> he messaged me about the Barzam, because I mentioned about missing the pre-order for the Barzam, and I think he said that he would pick up that one for me as well too. I have to look back at our at our messages, but yeah, I think uh, he was gonna help me get my hands on that. And let me just get this in here. Oops, what the? Okay. So yeah, what I'm wondering is, is will this extra thin cement work with this uh, wire? And I'm not sure. It seems maybe like it's working, but I'm gonna guess that that's gonna work well enough anyway to hold that wire there. Uh, question, what's a skill you want to get better at or learn? Uh, weathering, for one, is kind of the main thing. Yeah, weathering is something I would always like to get better at. It just that uh, I love making clean stuff as well too, so I mean there's just not a whole lot of motivation there. I know I, I would like to get better at weathering and I think I should get better at weathering but when you really love making clean stuff there's not a whole lot of motivation to really want to make much weathered stuff but um, what I would really like to I think be good at is doing really nice subtle weathering because doing some of that is nice um, but I think like doing like a, a bunch of like intensive weathering and like really involved weathering like the kind of stuff that Mike or Aaron do like on um, it's been especially anywhere near that level I, mean, I don't think uh, I'll ever that's ever like that's not ever gonna be me uh, I don't really see myself ever going down that path but at least to be able to do nice subtle weathering um, comfortably and successfully convincingly would be good would be ideal oh no I see there's an announcement of a new set of front mission kits from Square Enix you guys remember that set of four front mission kits that I reviewed from Square Enix they're coming out with another set oh no gonna have to 
get that. Those were cool. What was I gonna do? The, uh, yeah, I was gonna check my messages. I was just checking to see. I couldn't uh, remember about that situation with the bars, and so I wanted to check. But yeah, I think that was on Twitter. We discussed that, so it's kind of lost in the Twitter history. But yeah, I believe that uh, if I remember correctly, Patrick was going to help out with that one too. So, uh, uh, the Titanfall mech in the weather comp was probably handled uh, the subtle weathering effects. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, you know, uh, we'll have to see. Uh, what did I spill on my cutting mat? Mike, I spilled a SP, Mr. Cement SP glue. This one I mentioned earlier in the stream, I spilled this yesterday afternoon on the cutting mat, unfortunately. Uh, Posable action figure. What's the thing? Sorry, lost my train of thought, but anyway. Where's that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, yeah, what I was going to say, <laughs> sorry, regarding the uh, chest, uh, feedback, Sakuchan, hello, <laughs> I like the Kli emoticon there, or I guess the emoticon, what do you call that, sticker on Twitch. And a frame asked, us, Zach, do you have a budget for buying kits? Um, most of the kits that I get and review and build and stuff are just... Um, May are sponsored by U.S. Gundam Store, so it's uh, just part of my job. Part of I kind of see it as sort of part of my job and part of my pay. Like sort of like part of my pay is being paid in the kits that I get to enjoy. But I mean that's like my work too. So I don't know. Uh, I guess it'd be like I don't know, comparable to what I don't know of a good thing to compare that to but uh, I do buy some stuff just on my own as well too uh, so I don't necessarily have a budget for that but I mean I restrain myself from not buying like everything but I mean I still buy uh, you know a fair amount of stuff of course don't we all um, but yeah for like the feedback for the competition I really want to sneak in one of my own because it's a great opportunity to get some nice feedback from Aaron and Mike, so I want to sneak in one of my own kits <laughs> that I've done some weathering on and get those guys' thoughts on that, so... We'll have to see how it goes in the next session. If we're able to get through everyone, I'll maybe sneak in one of mine at the end. That also... would just be a good way of just kind of Kind of like showing good faith in that like aside from dishing out the criticism i'm welcoming some criticism of my own work as well too just to kind of get their thoughts on my weathering too because i'm i mean that's why they're on giving their feedback and that's why i had them on 
that's why I asked them to be judges because they're certainly the experts when it comes to judging. I mean, like, I can tell what looks like good weathering, but I mean, like, as far as like just being able to do it myself and like really knowing the intricacies of weathering, like, I'm just not an expert on this. So they are there to be the experts on weathering, and I'm just kind of the support staff. So, uh, you should do that for the clean build too, yeah, on the clean side. Get, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm brave enough to have Mike and Aaron critique my work, but I don't know if I'm brave enough to let Tim critique my work. I don't know if I could take that. He's mean. Uh, but, uh, I think there's so many more entries on that side too. We're uh, definitely not going to have time, I think. We're going to do another stream uh the later on this week and we're still not gonna finish i'm sure i'm certain so then we'll probably still need to do another one after that at some point as well too so we'll see That said, on the uh, the clean side, it's not just uh, where, like, on the weather side, it's just the three of us, Aaron and Mike and myself. But on the clean side, the way we're doing it on Chris's channel is, uh, like, Brian, Julio uh, are also there as well, too. So. They're there. Too much purple, not enough lines. Yes. See, as long as I'm showing something purple, like, I know I'm safe with Chris's feedback. Uh, you guys only made it to J, yeah. On the, on the clean side, we made it to J? I don't remember. <laughs> and, uh, for the uh, weathered side, we made it basically to M. There's one more L entry. Uh, but the first half of the alphabet had more entries. I think we have... We're basically a little bit more than halfway. But I think uh, what we can do probably next time as well with the weathered entries is because we've already looked through so many of them, uh, and if you guys have been watching, you can see how just like a lot of them end up being the, the criticism that we could say for it is basically the same thing that we've already said a bunch of times for other ones. So I think as we're going through the entries, like we still want to spend fair and like equal time on everyone's just to give everyone a, like a, a fair amount of time to get feedback. But we can probably move a little bit faster through some of them uh, just because it's basically kind of hitting all the same points that we've talked with, uh, talked about on multiple entries already, so we don't really need to constantly be rehashing the same points every time. Oh, uh, let's see. Mm -mm. Mm, yeah. Uh, and yeah, and uh, Anna asked, and Mike already answered this, but I'll just also kind of repeat the point. Anna asked, uh, why not uh, just pick some to give feedback and then the rest can request it uh, if it wasn't chosen? Yeah, it, because then I, that just means this, I mean, I'm dealing with people, like hundreds of people emailing me then, you know, if I mean, at least dozens of emails I'd be getting from people asking me to critique their work or not to critique their work or something. So just in the interest of just being fair to everyone I'm just critique we'll just critique all of them so alright um so can this part be glued like that yes it can. Hmm? Um, 
going to check. According to the instructions, this is kind of weird. I think it's the right part. These look exactly the same. If I use this one. Yeah, so I don't know. Alright. Whatever. I'm gluing it. Uh, commitment until the end. Yes, exactly. We started something and we intend to finish it. This big thing here. Uh -huh, okay, so. We got another bit of cord that attaches onto here. Are the entries still open? I have a clean Zuda. Uh, no, the entries are not open anymore. It was just for the contest. So the contest is already the contest uh, deadline was May first. So we've already got all the entries. Um, so yeah, that's already done. Um. So this should go all the way down, oh, it's kind of hard to tell from the photos, so I'm just trying to see. This little bit should slide all the way down to the bottom here, I guess, like that. Go ahead and stick some glue on that. And this part goes on the end here. Uh, yeah, sorry to say. Yeah, if you uh, weren't keeping up with the contest, if you didn't know about the contest or whatever, then yeah, you might not have known that the feedback sessions we've been doing are related to the contest. It's not just like a an open forum thing like... Uh, though if you want to do that, that's what uh, Chris and Brian and them do over on Chris's channel normally. So if you want to submit your work uh, just for like a normal episode of Critical Builds, what they do on Chris's channel, you can do that. Um, just those episodes don't include me. But you can still, especially, I mean, it doesn't have to be clean or weathered at that point. They just look at whatever. So you can submit stuff for them to look at. And I don't join because the, they do that on the weekends. And I usually don't uh, want to stream on the weekends because that's when I'm having family time. So... That's why... I'm not usually on Chris's channel when they're doing the critical builds or whatever, but just for the contest's sake. Yeah. Uh, I think they decided that uh, before the contest had this big of a response to when he just, oh yeah. Um, given the amount of people that enter, why didn't you guys add a third place? Um, yeah, Mike, uh, Skyers, yeah. We just ended up with a lot more entries than I expected, really, to be honest. Um, and because we're doing two categories, uh, like normally if it's just like a normal contest with one category then yeah we would do a first second and third place having three prizes ultimately that we're giving out but because there's two categories if we do a first second and third place in each then it's a total of six compared to four uh, prize packs so you know 
uh, asking Adam to give away six prize packs rather than four is, uh, you know, there's a difference there. So, I mean, three, four, that's fine. But when it gets up to six, it's kind of asking a lot. So, I mean, if we knew the contest would have so many entries, then yeah, maybe we would have. Uh, or at least made like the third place, just like a smaller prize pack, but still, you know, it's still a lot to give away for Adam, so. Uh, had to be grateful with that. Uh, Zach, do you think we Gundam on Netflix now? More people are into Gunpla. Uh, with Gundam on Netflix. Uh, how much of Gundam is on Netflix? I actually don't know what's on there, because Netflix here in Korea is different from uh, Netflix wherever you are in America or wherever else. What we have available on Netflix is different depending on the country, so... I actually don't know what is all on there even now. Here, I think last I knew, maybe like only Gundam Unicorn or something was really on there. And it was the TV version of Unicorn. But yeah, I mean, sure, if, if it's on Netflix, that means it's gonna at least get a little bit more exposure. And yeah, I would assume that would mean to some more people being turned on to Gumpla as well too, if they're watching the show. saying Unicorn and IBO to Chefster said there's a lot on Hulu as well too apparently last I knew I don't think Hulu is even available here I don't think we have it I've not checked in ages I think I checked a long time ago uh, did you put the clean versus weather winners and picked one between the two as well uh, yeah we did that as like a bonus round I don't think I like. I didn't publicly announce who the winner is. Sorry, I <laughs> maybe should have. But the C3PO won. Uh, and his prize, the prize for that was just a one hundred dollar cash prize from uh, True Gumpla. So they're already sorting that out. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I should uh, make an announcement publicly as to who was the winner of that for anyone who's interested. Ooh, come on, baby. It's our last part, yeah. Last part to clean up here. We still got a couple little elements to add uh, for like wires and things, springs. But as far as like plastic pieces, it's the last one that I'll need to be working on. And it's got a kind of annoying little mold line on it, unfortunately. Too much of the cheap skate. To, I'm just too much of a cheap skate to pay for Crunchyroll. There you go. Uh, I'm excited for the new Mech series announced recently. Oh yeah, yeah, that new one that Bandai announced should be interesting. And then I wonder what they've got planned for new uh, Gundam series got to be coming along at some point I'd imagine as well too All right, we need 
30. I think for these I'm gonna make, uh, so, uh, I guess I better put these together first, but, um, okay, well, yeah, hold that thought. So these are like the, uh, kind of arm parts. Oh my. Here. very loose and then I'll have to glue that later on I think once I figure out the pose for that uh, and this one here on the bottom and this one here on the top So there we go, a very delicate piece there. Yeah, with the original new spider kit from Nido, I believe both of these parts, uh, both this one and this one, I think were both like photo etch kind of like metal parts with the original kit. And it's only like with this version that they switched it to plastic ones, interestingly. So on both of those, there's uh, like a wire and I think I'm gonna make it longer than what it says to in the manual because in the manual like for example on the one side it says to cut 30 and I think I'm gonna cut like 50 or 60 because I think it you know 30 looks cool the wire is not that long but I think with this design it could look kind of cool like a little bit more wire hang off it gives it kind of a little bit more uh what's the kind of I don't know but like uh anything of like uh Techno, what do you call that? Like matrix aesthetic. What's it called? I don't know. I can't think of the word, but like wires hanging off of stuff and stuff. I think it would look kind of cool to have a little bit more wire going on. So we're gonna make this longer than what's recommended in the manual. So the manual says 30, I'm gonna go 60 with not my good nippers. Cyberpunk? Eh, not cyberpunk. No, it's kind of like, what's the word? Yeah, not that. And the other side says 90. So if we added 30, let's also add 30 here and go 120. Is my math right on that? Guess so. Uh, like the face from System Shock Two. I don't know System Shock Two. I don't know what's that. Beats me. The problem is where this wire needs to plug into is a very shallow little hole here, so I can drill it out a little bit deeper, but there's not much room to go because it's going to just punch through to the other side real fast. So I'm going to try to drill this out a little bit carefully without going all the way through, just so we can have a little bit more for our wire to be set in there. Matrix aesthetics, yeah. 
dystopian? No, it's not that. I don't know. It's there's like a word for it. I don't know something. If I can get my super glue open. Guess we'll just take off all that. Are you sure about adding extra wire? Um, do I have to think about that? Is that a... Is that a real question? No, is it something like I need to worry about? I'm sure enough. That I know I want to do it. It's gonna be long, but it's not gonna be like ridiculously long. See, that's all. It's not ridiculous or anything, right? On the opposite side. Oh man, there's even less space to glue the wire on the other side, man. It ooh. But one end. I'm gonna go into the side here. That I'm gonna let that go for a second. So, um, also, I mean, this does come with a character figure in here, but I'm not gonna use it. So, just kind of stick this somewhere else for the time being. It's a cool one, but uh, yeah, just doesn't really fit so much with what I want to do with this. I think so. If I can find that other character figure I was looking for. That would be good. <laughs> it's not that ridiculously long, the wire here. I mean, it's it's still pretty short. Oh no! And I glued this part on here wrong. Backwards. Back. But, I think maybe it doesn't matter. I can either take it off or drill it. Let's just drill it. Problem is going to be kind of a difficult angle to drill. Should I just take it off if I can? Let's see. It's a pretty delicate part. It's already glued, and the glue hasn't had that much time to set, so the glue should be not like totally cured. If I can get this off of here, yeah, okay, I think it should be alright. Glued this part in backwards. Should be facing the other way. Didn't really think about that. You have to follow the instructions carefully. Come on, come on, come out of there. Come on. Come out. Don't break. I know. Just go ahead and pop yourself on out of there, will you? There you go. Try that again, glued in the opposite way. Phew. Crisis averted, basically. Of 
unfortunately I was using the Tamiya Thin Cement, which is a little bit slower working than the SP. If I used the SP, I might have been screwed on that one. Whew. This kit box art reminds me of the movie Nine. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Interesting comparison, surely. Yeah. I could see that. So ultimately, this kind of hangs like this, so, okay. All right. How many Mississippis do I need to count for this super glue to get a good hold on that before I can let go of the wire? I should have tried to bend the wire more to the right shape first ahead of time so it's not putting any stress on it, but well enough. Anyway, there we go. So yeah, it's longer, it's just, it's not that much longer than what it says to do in the manual. The manual says, Nine centimeters, I did 12 centimeters, so. Shit. Yeah, see, I already popped it out of there. Stay there. Don't move. Okay, anyway, so. Uh, this looks like so much work. It's certainly more work than your average Gundam kit, but it's not that bad. Uh, that is basically it for now. Like I said, we needed to do a little bit more kind of clean up on these, sort of. We can get these parts put together. here like this. Again, just very fragile little pieces. Yeah, it, it like kits like this take some more work, um, but like I gotta say, it's pretty annoying when you see uh, like people online saying like, "Oh, Gundam kits are so easy. Why don't you build a real model where you have to actually glue seam lines and do this stuff?" It's like, dude, your real models that you're talking about are they're not that difficult. Come on. You're trying to make it out like, yes, Gumpla kits are easy in comparison, but like real models, you know, whether it be like tanks or airplanes, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's a difficult process to get like the finish of them looking right, the whatever, but like just building the model. I mean, there's a lot more glue required, but is gluing stuff challenging? No, not really. I mean, I think 
some guys tend to get on their high horse a little bit too high when talking about that kind of stuff. Uh, Zako says, I prefer a stress-free build. Yeah, totally. Nothing wrong with that. You guys, I was mentioning about yesterday that, like, uh, building Gumpla is, is really relaxing, and that's one reason why I really like it, and that's one reason why a lot of people enjoy it, is because it's a kind of meditative, kind of stress reliever kind of action to do a way to kind of wind down and just relax, enjoying your free time, whatever, so like... Is it so bad if the kits are kind of easy to do that you can just kind of zone out and just kind of enjoy the build? Nothing wrong with that. I snapped through my COVID and pretty grateful to be honest. There you go. Exactly. Now, Mike, I know obviously you've built your fair share of real models. So how would you compare for someone, uh, if someone were to say that Gumpla's too easy and people should go build a real model? Where they actually have to glue stuff. Oh no. And there's seam lines. Oh no. Gumpla never has seam lines. Oh no. Uh, I'm getting used to use a brush to paint my mat kit. Yeah. Machine Krieger is a really good. Uh, Machine Krieger is such a fun property for me because it's a really nice. Uh, crossover it's still like science fiction fantasy robot kind of stuff uh, but it has that a much more kind of realistic feeling to it right so it's not like building something like a tank or a jeep or something but it's a bit closer to that than your average Gundam model for example in comparison Blaze saying that he likes uh, Warhammer. See, Warhammer is something I've never been too interested in, uh, just because the whole fantasy element is not something that really appeals to me. I know there's like just like regular mecha stuff uh, within Warhammer as well too, but I know just the designs have just never really done much for me. So yeah, I can totally appreciate the work that those. I mean, like that. Warhammer and like mini painters and stuff that, that those guys do. I think like uh, on my trip to Chile last year, I think that's probably the first time when I've really been able to take like a really up close look at uh, uh, a good amount of like miniatures. Cause I'm sure I've like seen them around in shops in Japan, like painted ones. I mean, like in like sh show displays, but. I didn't really pay that much close attention to it, but like, because in Chile I was involved with the judging, so I had to uh, weigh in on the judging of those as well too, even though it's not really my expertise at all. Um, you know, I can still judge the painting of them, whatever. But, yeah, I can certainly appreciate uh, what goes into making stuff like that as well too. Each discipline has its own challenge. One is not really harder or easier than the other. They'll take time and patience. Yeah, I mean, totally. That's like what we were saying about... Right. You know, yeah. So what, uh, 
what was I saying? We were talking about that when? In the live stream, it's all blurred together now at this point, but yeah. Between like clean builds and weather builds, um, they both take a lot of, because I think we were talking about uh, which one you know, is harder or whatever. And they just take completely different like skills in terms of like doing the work to create a convincing model in either one style or the other. They both take uh, a lot of skill and creativity, but just apply it in different ways. Like if you were to take someone who is like a really good ship modeler and then ask them to make a, a Gundam model, it's probably going to look pretty shit, to be honest. Like, uh, you know, it's hard to say for sure, but I would bet that it probably wouldn't turn out looking all that great. Uh, just because there's not experienced in that style. This is a totally different style. So, I mean, they have, may have a ton of skill, a ton of experience with, like, traditional modeling and stuff, which is kind of, in a lot of communities, thought of as the higher form of modeling. But it's definitely not... You know, that different. So with this um, last part, we need to stick onto the head. We're going to be done with all of the construction for the moment. Let me see. Where is this stuck on here? basically stuck right on there. I guess so. Okay. Yeah. this part we're sticking onto the top of the head there's not really a particular like connection like a peg to that it sticks onto or anything you just kind of have to stick it on there and try to stick it in the right place it's not super clear there's kind of a detail that sort of matches up with that but there we go so for the moment i think that's all for today basically we're done with all the construction and everything we can start some priming and some painting and doing all that uh, fun stuff and then i think later we'll probably add uh some more wires or something maybe later on if i can find you know good setting for all of that um, the other thing, let me just see here, I wanted to do, so this is the front of this part here, so as far as putting this up on a base, um, we want this to be flying a little bit, kind of flying forward. But like not that drastically leaning forward, so I need to maybe plan this in a way so that it's not going to be straight up and down, but slightly forward. So like right here, something basically. So... 
<laughs> Zane said, is this a robot or a satellite? I have no idea. Yeah, it's kind of both. Like I was saying earlier, it always kind of reminds me of a satellite, but it's really more of like a drone scout flying robot similar to... Mm. hole in here for the base and I think we'll call it a day for now so so yeah so for tomorrow like I said I don't really think there's too much purpose to live streaming the uh, uh, priming process on this spraying the surfacer and all that so I don't really think we need to do that but So I don't know. I don't know what uh, what we're gonna cover. I want. I wanted to stream working on this every day this week, but uh, if there's not really too much to show tomorrow, then maybe we won't stream tomorrow. If it's basically just going to be um, just the priming, and then I don't know what else I'll be able to get to tomorrow. Because then after the surfacer is on, then I need to give the surfacer some time to cure I can't just immediately go into painting so I could but I don't want to for this particular project I want to give the I don't I'm in a rush to finish it but not that much of a rush that uh, I I don't mind giving the servicer some time to do its thing before I get straight into work on the painting so kind of having a little bit of a hard time here with this drill bit kind of tearing my shit up but it's all good. Floaty ship thing, gotcha. Yep. So we needed to go up to six millimeter. up a little bit more but yeah. uh, what color is the primer that's a good question because I'm not sure at the moment probably going to just do mahogany which is kind of like the standard machining Krieger primer color typically use is mahogany or black so it'll probably be one of the two of those Oh, come on. There you go. That's a big old hole put in that. that and the 
the shaft. It'll be up here like that. And I can't show you this on the camera, but um, so the angle is kind of more than what I wanted, I think, for this. So I might have to make some adjustments. I didn't quite want it to be at that much of an angle. And nothing's quite glued yet, so we've got some time still. We can work with that. So anyway, uh, for today, that's going to be all. But uh, if there's going to be a live stream tomorrow, I'll let you guys know. At this point, I'm not sure if there's really much worth showing but I'll let y'all know. What colors are you going to paint for the kit? Yeah, the colors I'm still not decided about yet either, as we are discussing a little bit earlier. Uh, one thing I will also do while we're here, just quickly, is <sighs> a plastic shavings in my mouth. gluing this panel in here. It's gonna be kind of just one more delicate part of the head that I'm gonna have to be careful of, but Hold for a moment while the glue is setting. It should be enough. Now we've got our open hatch. I really wanted to make the open hatch like this on the Cooster as well too, but I just opted for omitting the hatch because that's where I put the uh, like the compressor part of the kind of airbrush weapon that I used for that, if y'all will recall. So there we go. That's our last bit added on there. The open hatch on the head. And I'll now go and try to find the missing pilot figure that I was hoping to use with this. So that's it for today, guys. If there's going to be any sort of stream related to this tomorrow, I'll let you know. We'll see how it goes. For now, I'll say, Auf Wiedersehen, and uh, thank you all so much for hanging out again today. All right. <laughs>